Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury 2. The rematch. Huge fight this past weekend. Tyson Fury. This is a boxer's boxer. This guy, he knows the sweet science of boxing, but he is not necessarily known as a knockout artist. Fighting arguably the baddest man on the planet, the most feared man in boxing, because Deontay Wilder has a cannon for a right hand. If he hits you, nine out of 10, you are going to sleep. He has ended every fight with a knockout. Every opponent he's ever fought except Tyson Fury, he has knocked them out. So how did the man Tyson Fury, who is not known as a knockout artist, knock out the knockout artist? Now I'm sure some of you watching this are like, Sean, I'm confused. Like, what does this have to do with business? What does this have to do with entrepreneurship or any of the things that you typically talk about in your videos? On the surface, nothing. But bear with me because I believe that there is a lesson in every loss. And if you are in business or if you are thinking about going into business, you really need to pay attention and learn from Deontay Wilder's loss. Now, granted, Deontay Wilder this right hand is his, that, that's his weapon. That is what he is known for. It had gotten him out of obscurity and took him to be a marquee name. B, he sells out arenas because of that right hand. So look at that right hand as your product or your service, whatever it is that you're selling. But at some point, you have to evolve. You have to take whatever that thing is that you became famous for and you have to reinvent you have to start to evolve and be intentional about it because yes, that right hand worked until it didn't. Tyson Fury figured out, how do I get around this right hand? And more important, how do I expose the holes in Deontay Wilder's game? I think back to companies like Kodak. Kodak is synonymous, synonymous with film and photography. This is a company that was founded in the 1800s. They're over 150 years old. Coming into the late 90s, the advent of digital photography, Kodak, no, they believed they, they were on their high horse and they believed, look, everybody is gonna continue to shoot with film like they've done for the last 100 years. Any photographer out there who's a purist, they wanna shoot with film. Uh-uh, uh-uh, times change. Nothing stays the same. And in mid 2000s, Kodak, Kodak, uh, a, 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 an American institution files for chapter 11 bankruptcy because they did not change fast enough. They did not evolve on the fly because they were stuck in their old ways of doing business. I think back to even my company, Power Moves Inc. This, we are experts in grassroots marketing. We're experts in guerrilla and alternative marketing. But in the mid 2000s, everything became about digital marketing. How can we survive? And in real time, we had to now scramble and think, how do we survive? We're analog in a digital world. Everybody wants digital marketing. Nobody wants to put street teams out on the streets. Nobody wants brand ambassadors out on the streets at that time. So I thought about another property that I founded called the Global Spin Awards. And the Global Spin Awards is the Grammys for the DJs, which means I had relationships with DJs all around the world. And as we sat and we thought, how can we reinvent ourselves? We might not have had huge social followings and a huge digital background, but our DJs did. They had these huge constituencies that followed them, that moved city to city, state to state, country to country with them. They had these huge social um, followings. And, you know, as we started to think, we're like, whoa, you know what? We can continue to do marketing, but let's incorporate the DJs who already have these constituencies and a Make them ambassadors. So whereas before we have ambassadors on the streets, now we're gonna use the DJs to become brand ambassadors for companies, and we're gonna use them to now work on behalf of the brands that only used to work with us for grassroots marketing. 
You have to be willing and intentional about evolving your company. The music industry from which I come from. In the late 90s, the world was changing. I remember when the dot-com bubble bust and everybody thought that the internet era was, it was a waste of time. So many people lost so much money in that, that internet, I mean, in the, that dot-com revolution. But technology kept going, it kept going. So yes, while record labels were selling millions and millions of CDs and we got comfortable, everybody was getting rich at that time. There was a company called Napster that came into play. And the music industry, instead of recognizing that technology was only gonna increase, internet speeds were only gonna increase, heads of the record label said no. We wanna put them out of business. They are a threat to our business model, the way we have done business for hundreds of years. So yes, they go to court, they do whatever they do, they put Napster out of business. But there's the, the, the genie was out the bottle. There was no going back. Internet speeds were only gonna increase. And the music industry as we know it plummeted. Millions and millions of Lost wages and jobs and, and, and revenues were lost. But the music industry got smart because whereas they realized we made a mistake fighting against Napster, we didn't embrace technology, we didn't embrace the future. When companies like Spotify and Pandora and all of these other streaming services started to pop up, the music industry said, this time, we're going to work with you. But the business model changed. We'll license out the music and we'll get paid off at every, every time that a record is streamed, a record label gets paid. Now streaming is the number one way that music is consumed on planet Earth. But the music industry learned from its past mistakes and adapted. And now the business of music is flourishing once again. Learn from your mistakes. Do not think that things are not gonna change because I'm telling you as a fellow entrepreneur, they will change. And you have to be ready to adapt on the fly. You have, and honestly speaking, in times of peace, you should be preparing for war. What do I mean by that? While things are good, I don't know what it is that you're selling, I don't know what your service is, but if you are making money, if your company is growing, you should be thinking now, how do I pivot? How do I reinvent what we do? How do I expand our capabilities? So just in case things change for the worse, if, if, if the landscape of what it is, of our industry changes, we are able to seamlessly go with the change itself. Learn from your mistakes because there is a lesson in every loss. Peace and love make every move a power move and I'll catch you all on the next video. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.